What's going on YouTube? Anthony Sequera here, and we are going to take a look at the theory behind the dynamic multipoint VPN in this YouTube video. And of course, this maps to the wonderful Anarsi exam in the CCNP Enterprise from Cisco Systems. It's really interesting that the Dynamic Multipoint VPN makes its way into the VPN section of the NRC course. And why I say it's interesting is because it's sitting right next to, in the Cisco Objectives, the Layer 3 MPLS VPN. These two are instances of technologies, of solutions that we can implement that are going to involve a lot of different technologies working together in order to provide an overall solution. And this can be intimidating to students. They're like, oh my goodness, you know, all these separate parts that I've got to, you know, make work together. And one of the things that I want to emphasize to you in this illustration here is the fact that it's really not that bad. So we want to break it down on the individual technologies and we can even do this when we get to the YouTube videos I'll create for you on actually configuring this. But it's it's really not going to be bad if you take it step by step and really focus in on one technology at a time. But perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself. Why would we use something like the Dynamic Multipoint VPN? Well, it's great for hub and spoke type of VPN environments that we want to create where we have like a central hub of a headquarters, and then we have branch office after branch office after branch office. In fact, as I record this, we are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic, and you can only imagine the remote office locations that we might need to initiate in order to accommodate the new stay-at-home, work-at-home kind of life that we are currently experiencing. So, Think about the workload that you might have on yourself at headquarters and even at branch offices as you have to provision all of these circuits for the hub and spoke type of virtual private network. What the dynamic multipoint VPN allows is really compelling. It is the dynamic creation of tunnels between the entities in our hub and spoke design. And this can be done on demand so that when spoke A wants to talk to spoke B, for example, directly, it not only doesn't need to use the hub, but dynamically the appropriate secured tunnel can be created. So we end up with a full mesh, if needed, of IPsec over GRE tunnels, and this is just wonderful that this can be accommodated without a huge burden from a configuration standpoint, and also a reduced burden overall on the hub of the hub and spoke. Headquarters no longer has to be the doormat for all the traffic that these branch offices want to send to each other. Well, let's talk about the components that make it a reality. I said up at the top of this presentation that we were dealing with something that is layering technologies on top of themselves in order to give us a solution. And the three specific technologies that are going to be working together, <laughs> uh, we'll make an argument for a fourth here in a moment, but the main technologies here are multi-point GRE. We are used to creating GRE tunnels where we specify a source for the tunnel and a destination. In the multipoint GRE world, we're specifying the source, but the destination is going to be a dynamic ingredient. How cool is that? There's the next hop resolution protocol, and the next hop resolution protocol is going to be key here for the name resolution that's going to be required for these things to be on demand and dynamic. And then, of course, we need a good dose of IPsec if we're going to add security to the DMVPN. It's kind of interesting that the DMVPN could be done without security. Yikes. But oftentimes we wrap in the IPsec and we're going to use a nifty trick with IPsec for configuration called a crypto profile, where we're basically going to have a stripped down crypto map that can apply to an interface, a single interface here, and do its magic for all of the sessions over that interface. So the IPsec crypto profile comes to the rescue. 
Now, I said we could make an argument for a fourth component, and it's just kind of assumed you would realize that we often want to wrap in a dynamic routing protocol here. EIGRP is super well-oriented and tuned to use in the DMVPN, but you could certainly do a DMVPN without using EIGRP. So one of the things that I wanted to walk through with you here in this theoretical presentation is just a closer look at the operations that are going to take place in order to make the DMVPN a reality. First of all, we said that there's a hub and spoke design. And now that we understand that the next hop resolution protocol is going to be in use here, I need to elaborate with you that the hub is actually going to be fulfilling the role of what's called a next hop resolution protocol server. So it's like a mapping server that is going to have the information about the spokes that would be necessary. And the spokes are going to be next hop resolution protocol clients. They'll be consuming this information in order to do the dynamic tunnel establishment between themselves. So we have a nice client-server relationship from an NHRP perspective. So how this takes place is in the first initial, like, initialization of the overall solution, we're going to have the spokes register with the hub as far as that NHRP goes. Now, how can they do that? Well, we are going to hard code, if you will, the spokes. We are going to statically configure them with the IP address of their NHRP server. So we have the spokes configured to be able to find the hub. They're going to get all registered up with that hub. And then there are going to be tunnels established between each of the spokes in the hub and they exchange the IGP prefix information for the overall topology. So there's this great, you know, IGP love sharing, EIGRP is often used here, and the devices can learn of the topology dynamically through that exchange. Note that this is, again, really cool about the DMVPN, the fact that the hub, its primary responsibility, in addition to next top resolution protocol, its primary responsibility is control plane dissemination of the route information learned from the routing protocol. It does not have to be in the data path when one spoke goes to send information directly to another spoke. It does play a critical role, though, as we said, in the control plane information sharing. Once that whole first two phases or steps would be a better word here, once those first two steps are fully implemented, well then the spokes can end up doing the real magic of DMVPN and they can start exchanging information directly with each other when needed based on the on-demand spoke-to-spoke tunnels that can be created. Now, where are you going to find additional documentation on the DMVPN? Well, of course, we're going to be heading up to none other than Cisco.com. And let me show you how to navigate the documentation so you can find this feature with ease and even get a head start in configuration because there's great configuration examples in the documentation that you can do a little trick I learned called copy and paste. So head on up to Cisco.com, and from the menu, I'm just going to go to Support, and then I'm going to choose Products and Downloads, and notice we get to the page that has all of the links from a All Products uh, standpoint. In fact, click on All Products once you're there. So you get to this All Products Support page, and it just so happens that this page is the exact page that you would have access to in the CCIE Enterprise Lab exam. So yes, you are given this documentation in that exam. Too bad we don't get it in the NRC exam, right? <laughs> that would be swell. We'd get uh, probably a perfect score if that were the case. But anyways, here we are in that all product documentation, and I'm going to go to the networking software area. I'll grab a 15.2 code release. That's pretty close to what I'm running. And the first trick is in here in the list of configuration guides, and there's a lot of them, is to kind of figure out where you would be looking for this feature. And that's easy in this case, right? It's security and services and VPN. So there is, for the 15.2 M&T, you notice there's three different books in here. And the one that we want is not securing user services. It's not securing the data plane, 
It's the Secure Connectivity Configuration Guide. And in there, there is a book dedicated to the Dynamic Multipoint VPN. So there is our documentation on this feature. And you'll notice, as I indicated, inside of this documentation, we have some excellent examples. And by the way, I'm not done yet. We're in the book now of the DMVPN, but I've got to go into the appropriate chapter. So if we choose that main dynamic multipoint VPN chapter, inside of there, we're going to find some great configuration examples. Here's a example hub configuration. And then as you might guess, an example spoke configuration. So we can do our copy and paste from this area to really get a jump start on the commands that we're going to be using to configure the DM VPN. And that's what we're going to pick up with in the very next video here in this little mini series on the dynamic multipoint VPN from Cisco Systems as we need to know it for the NARCI certification exam. As always, thanks so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel. Stay safe and check back soon because I'm going to be recording more videos. I suddenly seem to have a lot more free time on my hands.